Are all documents turned in? Yes. Okay. We'll call the regular meeting to order, 18th regular meeting of the Common Council order. Pat, would you call the roll, please? Bauman? Here. Deberg? Here. Eberg? Here. Doyle? Here. Manny? Excused. Moody? Here. Perez? Here. Ports? Excused. Schultz? Here. Stephan? Here. Devin Akron? Here. Tevin Akron? Here. Vanderwill? Here. Wangaman? Here. Warner? Here. Wenninger? Excused. 13 present. Forms present. Alderman Van Akron. Your Honor, I move that the minutes of the previous meeting and the special meeting be approved as entered on the record. It's been moved and seconded that the uh, minutes of the last special meeting and the previous council meeting be approved under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Pledge of Allegiance. I guess I was chosen for that this evening. So. <laughs> See, I told you they like it. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Before we start this evening, I would like to wish everyone a happy holiday and a safe holiday. This will be our last meeting until after... Uh, well, January 7th will be our next meeting, so everyone have a happy and safe holiday. We have one hearing this evening, and that's to amend the text of the zoning ordinance to permit indoor commercial entertainment as a conditional use with the UI Urban Industrial District in the conditional use regulation. All interested parties wishing to be heard. All interested parties wishing to be heard. Sir, if you'll come up to the microphone, give us your name, yes. address. Uh, my name is Mark Michelson. I represent uh, Dragon Carp Inc. on behalf of the officers and directors of that company. I'd like to make a statement. Okay. Uh, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, um, operations of indoor commercial entertainment facilities of, of many sorts uh, is currently managed through the zoning ordinance, uh, which provides permits only for conditional uses which been, have been approved. Uh, there are no locations or zoning classifications in which there is a permit by right or special use regulations. Indoor commercial entertainment facilities may not operate anywhere in the city without conditional use permits approved by the City Planning Commission. Uh, ordinances currently allow conditional use permits for indoor commercial entertainment facilities in the following zoning classifications. We have neighborhood office, suburban office, neighborhood commercial, suburban commercial, urban commercial, central commercial, and suburban industrial classifications. The addition of the urban industrial district to the list of conditional use classifications should not be detrimental to the city's ability to manage its plans for land use through zoning classifications, the extent and character of commercial and industrial growth in its neighborhoods or districts, or the safety of its citizens and visitors. We can appreciate the city's desire to manage its business growth for each of the above reasons. Uh, there certainly may be instances where any given location is inappropriate for certain types or perhaps any type of indoor recreational activity, including any of the office, commercial, or industrial classifications. Uh, we believe that the city, however, should have the additional discretion to welcome indoor commercial entertainment businesses in safe, small or large scale industrially zoned, urban industrially zoned locations. And it's for this reason that we support the Planning Commission's recommendation to the above text amendment. Sir, could I have the name of your company again? Dragon Carp. Incorporated. CARP, C A R P. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to be heard? Anyone else wishing to be heard? Alderman Van Acker. Move that the hearing be closed. Moved and seconded, hearing be closed under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Confirmation of Appointments, Steve. Uh, now this was brought in the last regular meeting to the honorable members of the council, uh, pursuant to the requirements of Section 7.30 of the Wisconsin Statutes. Herewith, submit for your approval the list of nominations for election inspectors, and uh, signed by the mayor. And I believe all the aldermen received copies of the list of about four pages of the election inspectors. 
Thank you. There is a question on one of them um, that was addressed to me tonight, Pat. I don't know if you thought, got that or not. One of the candidates on which one? In Ward Eight. eight. Aldermen are allowed to work at the voting polls. We have Val Schultz that works at the voting poll also, as long as they're not on the ballot. So we do have a couple of aldermen that are, are poll workers. Okay, but this gentleman would be on the ballot this time. Then he won't be working. But he has a, this is a two-year appointment. So he won't, be on the, he won't be able to work in April or, or February. But he is on as an appointed poll worker for the next two years. Okay, clarifies that. Thank you. Alderman Van Akron, those can be confirmed. Thank you, Your Honor. Move that the appointments be approved. Second. Moved and second appointments be approved under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Public forum, Pam? No one. Alderman Van Akron. Your Honor, we, um, on the consent agenda, but Uh, excuse me, Alderman Van Ecker. Alderman Warner. Uh, thank you, I'm sorry, uh, Alderman Van Ecker. We wanted to pull 1717 forward, which deals with uh, rezoning. Or amending the zoning ordinance, I would say. Okay, Alderman Warner. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. RO number 3670203. Uh, uh, is amending the text of the zoning ordinance to allow indoor commercial entertainment as a conditional use in an urban industrial district. And on that, I would move that we accept and file the report of officer and pass the ordinance. Okay. Move to second, accept and file the RO and pass the general ordinance under discussion. Under discussion, Your Honor. This will allow the plan commission to review and recommend to the council the same type of conditional use that it could recommend in a suburban industrial district. A con conditional use is not automatically allowed and would be subject to approval of the plan commission and the common council. This change will allow us to be more flexible as the use of our city's older industrial areas change. Thank you. If there's no other discussion, Pat, would you call the roll, please? D. Berg. Aye. E. Berg. Aye. Doyle. Aye. Moody. Aye. Perez. Aye. Schultz. Aye. Stephan. Aye. D. Van Akron. Aye. T. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Longerman. Aye. Warner. Aye. Bowman, 13 eyes. Motion carried. Thank you for coming this evening. Okay. Now, Alderman Van Akron, consent agenda. Thank you, Your Honor. On the consent agenda, before I get started, I, I did talk to a few people this weekend, and they wanted us or wanted me to remind everybody, make sure we speak into the mics. Uh, people at home were st still having trouble hearing. Um, so if you got a clip to you, make sure you don't turn away from it, things like that. Just a reminder. Uh, on the consent agenda, I ask that all ROs be accepted and filed, all com committee reports be accepted and fi adopted, all resolutions and substitute resolutions be put upon their passage. Moved and second that all ROs be accepted and filed, RCs be accepted and adopted, resolutions and substitute resolutions be put upon their passage under discussion. Alderman Doyle. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to pull document 1816 on the hiring freeze so I have the opportunity to vote no on that. Okay. And I'd like to comment when appropriate. Go ahead. Go ahead. Thank you. I do agree with the first whereas that the Common Council is facing a reduction in state shared revenue and we have to take some action. However, I have two concerns. First, I don't believe the freeze method should be continued. A freeze does control spending, and I don't question that fact. But for three years, our only response to budget problems has been to freeze department spending and to freeze hiring. This method will eventually starve our departments, and it keeps the city from quickly replacing essential vacancies. Right now, the mayor cannot replace a critical position like the housing inspector because of the freeze. We also live in a time of rapid change, and I don't like the idea that the city cannot create new positions. The freeze method is a, of budget control is a public admission that the Common Council does not have either a plan or the resolve to deal with the budget issues. Why does the Common Council use the freeze method? I sense that the Council wants to avoid making unpopular decisions, so instead passes them on to the mayor and department heads. 
<clears throat> there is a second way to solve budget problems. It's called planning. Instead of letting chance or fate determine what jobs are cut, we should prioritize city services and identify those that are essential or required by law. Mayor Schramm and the city leadership gave us an excellent questionnaire to help us with these decisions. Unfortunately, the ideas were not brought to the Common Council for discussion. A second concern that I have with the budget process is that most aldermen do not have a voice in the decisions. The only decision that most of the 16 aldermen make is to vote yes or no to the final budget on November 25th. We were elected to make these decisions, but we are not making them. In my three years on the council, I can't recall one worthwhile discussion about the budget that involved the whole council. We cannot build a new police station, implement a flood control plan, and maintain services all in the face of declining revenues by going from freeze to freeze every year. Eventually, we will need a plan and we will have to make major changes. Next year would be a good time to start. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Doyle. Alderman Warner, same 1816? We have, okay. 1860. Uh, on this document, Your Honor, I actually wanted some clarification. And one of my concerns in the last two, be it further resolves, the, the second from the end states that no new city positions shall be created during the calendar year of 2003. And I do support the idea of, of uh, uh, passing this resolution. Uh, I think it might need a little bit of a change unless we can get clarification. I know I talked to Mike Hudson. He, perhaps could, uh, could do this for me. And the second one, it says that said policy shall be reviewed at the December 15, 2003 meeting of the Common Council unless reorganization results in reduction of existing positions or by approval of three-fourths of the Common Council. And I guess my concern is I want to make sure that it's understood that this allows us by a three-fourths vote of the Common Council to fill positions in case of an emergency. And some of my concerns in that are you never really know what's going on in the world nowadays. And I think we need to make sure there is a mechanism in case of an emergency or other extreme threat or incident that would allow additional positions if needed for the health, safety, or welfare of our city. We cannot predict what may happen in the world today or tomorrow. With terrorism threats that exist and the unsettled climate throughout the world, I think we should allow, should make sure we, we allow a process to deal with unforeseen needs promptly in the interest of public health and safety. I think by passing an ordinance like this, this makes a statement that the city does not intend to expand its workforce and in so doing tends to hold the line on its employee costs. So I think it's a wise thing to do and as long as we have a three-fourths majority, if it's needed, it's probably going to be passed. So I would hope we support it. And I would like a clarification on that before I offer up a change otherwise, thanks. I'd probably better respond to Jerry's questions too. But first of all, uh, Mike, in answer to your questions, the intent was to allow the council to add a position if need be, uh, create a new position with a three quarter uh, vote of the council. So that is. Uh, it would be uh, you're, you're subject to your approval a new position and then uh, Jerry in response to your questions uh, uh, how would I phrase this maybe hiring freeze isn't isn't the proper terminology I think we're accomplishing exactly what what you would like accomplished what what we're suggesting in this is that every position when it becomes vacant due to a, a retirement or a quit uh, rather than the HR director and salary and grievance rubber stamping the replacement of that position, it will be reviewed by, by the uh, salary and grievance committee with, uh, rep with a report coming to full council recommending either that position be uh, filled or not filled with notification to the mayor. Uh, and the importance of that is when we do budgets uh, in September, 85% of the budget, I believe, is uh, salaries and fringe benefits. And it's awfully difficult to make substantial cuts in a budget when you can only use 15% of the budget when you're not touching, touching manpower. And I think this document enables us to take a look at that. And it also informs each and every one of you that every time you replace a position, there's going to be cost ramifications down the line, especially in, in 2004 when 
we don't know what's going to happen with shared revenues. So Jerry, I think we're accomplishing what you want. Perhaps the word hiring freeze isn't proper terminology. What we're doing is looking at every position like we've never done before uh, in an attempt to either eliminate or consolidate. And we have been doing that uh, very recently. Uh, two management positions, one in plan department and one in uh, public works were recently combined with other positions and we were able to eliminate two positions. Now uh, those are the type of things we're looking at doing. Thank you, Mike. Okay, Alderman Berg, did you want a uh, same issue? Uh, same issue. Okay. Uh, thank okay. you, Your Honor. Uh, I think, uh, again, this did come out of the budget policy survey as a recommendation. Clearly, this is not a remedy that stands by itself. This won't resolve uh, uh, two point uh, some billion dollars of state uh, shortfall, nor will it take care of the shortfall we're going to experience in the city. But I think this came about as a result of a number of things. Uh, the original document uh, had the word hiring freeze. Uh, that had, I think, an overlay that had a connotation. So this document was developed, and I think with thanks to Mike, uh, Mayor Schramm, and I think reality testing by the department heads. Uh, uh, Tom Holt, and Chief uh, Kirk, and Zaire took good looks at this uh, to see how it would play on an ongoing kind of basis. And I think in many ways, this clarifies the practice uh, that was in place in many of the departments and makes a policy. We need to note that uh, reduction in our municipal workforce has been going on for a long, long time. Uh, the city's area has expanded since 1970 by 50% from 9.64 square miles uh, to 14.46 square miles. At the same time, we've experienced reductions in our workforce. For example, since 1970 in public works, the public works department was reduced by 28 uh, percent, much due to technology and I think much due to the kind of cooperation that we enjoy from all levels of our employees, from the men and women who work for the city, for their representatives and from our management team that have the sense of mission that allow things like this to happen. So I guess I encourage your support to follow through and uh, pass this document. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Schultz, on the same document? Yes, sir. From comments made so far this evening, it sounds like the goals of this resolution can be accomplished without the resolution. But anyway, I'm going to uh, read my comments that I prepared for it. I am going to vote no on this at this point in time. As I have said, stated several times, I think a hiring freeze is the last thing you do. We need to look at how we manage people. Do we need the levels of management in all departments that we currently have? Are there efficiencies and cost savings to be gained by reorganizing all departments? Before we do things that will negatively affect how work is done and services provided by not filling positions, we need to look at all other possibilities of reducing costs. This proposal has a provision for exceptions to the freeze, but as we saw in the past, council is reluctant to allow exceptions, and rightly so. But some positions simply cannot be left vacant. We saw this when the city planner retired, and the mayor and this council refused to fill it quickly. The department suffered and I believe the city was hurt by not filling a position for several months. Some losses are not visible. If dollars are lost or gained, you can show that on a spreadsheet. But if things are not getting done or developers or customers are frustrated and not being taken care of, that does not show up on a spreadsheet. Uh, by the way, I think the people that we have in city development today are very excellent people. This is not meant to be a criticism of them. It's a criticism of uh, past actions that this council did or did not take. The Strategic Fiscal Plan Committee has in committee RC 310203. This is the budget policy formulation survey results that we all submitted. I think this committee needs to meet soon and do some serious strategic fiscal planning and make recommendations to this council. This hiring freeze, this proposed hiring freeze, may be one of those recommendations, but a lot of other things must be done first. If we can freeze wages, obtain better cost sharing of health care costs, which are currently greater than $4 million annually, we may not need a hiring freeze. This is what strategic fiscal planning is all about. We need from this committee a long-range plan with goals and objectives, not a piecemeal approach taking the easiest and least painful route. Along with strategic planning and prioritizing of spending, the Finance Committee approved an interdepartmental transfer for the Fire Department for National and State Conference, $2,751, for the purpose of executed, uh, executive training relating to EMS issues. The justification for it is, 
This is essential due to the complexity of EMS issues in the fire service and the possible provision of ambulance services. This is just wrong, wrong, wrong at this point in time. If we are sincere in our stated goal of wanting a contract with Orange Cross and the ambulance service staying with them and controlling and prioritizing our spending. Thank you. Okay. Alderman Vanderwiel, same issue? Yeah, same issue. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. I have a question for Mike Hotz. Uh, you had said that a three-quarter vote would create a new position. Would it also uh, fill a vacant position? trying to recall. Uh, the intent was that all, all positions would be reviewed by salary and grievance. Uh, a normal, uh, the normal filling of a position, uh, the RC would come from committee to council and, and that would be accepted and filed or would appear on the consent agenda uh, if there were no objections by the mayor or salary and grievance. But you would, there would be a document generated and it would appear on the agenda, uh, in this case as a on the consent agenda. So every position replacement would be there for you to peruse and, and discuss. Simple majority. Correct. In that case, it would be a simple majority. Uh, I, I just add, I concur with uh, what Mike Hutz just indicated, the, uh, the reference to the three-quarters vote, although it's not clear in the document, I, I think to make it clearer that uh, that phrase, unless reorganization results in reduction of existing positions or by approval by three-quarter vote of the council, should be in the, in the uh, be it further resolved, just above where it's located. Uh, that's what it's addressing, is no new city position be created during calendar year 2003 unless reorganization results in reduction of existing positions or by approval of three-quarter vote of the council. Uh, where it is right now, it, it makes it a little ambiguous. It says that said policies shall be reviewed at the end of the year unless reorganization results in reduction of existing positions. So it really fits better in the paragraph before that. Uh, but I agree with uh, Mr. Hutz that this doesn't provide that to fill new positions you'd need a three-quarter vote. It's just to create new positions. Uh, to fill existing positions would be a majority vote as I see it. Okay. Okay, Alderman Vanderwilly. Will. <clears throat> Alderman Warner. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. You know, I would like to see that change made too. I think it should be moved ahead if that's something we can do. If we need to amend it make on the floor. Motion. Make a motion. I'd make it. a motion to amend it. As Steve stated, moving that up to the second last, uh, be it further resolved after, after the uh, 2003. Okay. I guess I prefer to use the word moratorium when I, when I think about this, because I think that's what it is. It delays the hiring or replacement of a new city employee. I think this allows for a thorough examination, as Mike stated, of any position opening that we have. And I think that the department head, the salary and grievance committee, and the mayor will review each opening, and the salary and grievance committee will bring a recommendation to the common council if a position needs to be filled. We do not allow public works to proceed with a project without approval. Finance cannot simply decide to spend money without council approval. Public protection and safety cannot order stop signs installed without council approval. We should not be filling openings automatically without council approval. That's the way I feel. We do not know what the next budget year will bring and we must be cautious in the decisions we make throughout the year. I think this will help us do that. I support the concept of this document and I would ask that everyone support it. Thank you. We have a motion before us in a second. Excuse me, Alderman Moody. Okay. On amendment or on a. Okay, so this is, it says authorizing freeze between January 1st, 2003 and June 20, 2003. During that time period, are we going to have a better idea what the state is going to do? I would hope so. No one can assure you what the state's going to do, but I would hope so that we ha they have a better handle on it and we know where we're going with it at that time. Okay, we have a motion and a second before us on amendment. All in favor of the amendment? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carried. Now we're on a
document. New motion. I need a new motion, Alderman Warner. I would make a, make a motion that we pass. Yeah, where's the number now? RC number 216-0203 as amended. Moved and seconded. Under discussion. Hearing none. Do we need a roll call on that? Mm -hmm. I think we should. Would you call the roll, please? This is uh, accepting and adopting the report of committee and passing the substitute resolution as amended. Eberg? Aye. Doyle? No. Moody? No. Perez? Aye. Schultz? No. <clears throat> Stephan? Aye. D. Van Akron? Aye. T. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderwill? Aye. Wangelman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Bauman? D. Bird. Aye. Ten ayes, three noes. Motion carried. Okay, now everything else left in the consent agenda from 18.1 through 18.21. Alderman Vanderwoyle. Thank you, Your Honor. I've, uh, I'd like to pull 18.18. 18.18. I just have a question. How much does the city pay for the... Uh, 2003 high school graduation party. Alderman Schultz. Oh, Michael? Okay. Uh, this year the amount is 2500 I believe it was. It used to be 3000 and it's starting to go down. I think every year they're going to go down something. I'm not sure. They were talking about. Does he want a separate vote on that? Did you want a separate vote on that one? Yeah, I'm going to vote against it. Okay. Ready? Any time. Okay. All in favor of. Oh, that would be a roll call. Money. All right, that's right. <laughs> Pat, would you call the roll, please? Moody? Aye. Perez? Aye. Schultz? Aye. Stephan? Aye. D. Van Akron? Aye. T. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderwil? No. Wangaman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Bauman? Aye. D. Berg? Aye. E. Berg? Aye. Doyle? No. 11 ayes, 2 noes. Motion carried. Is there any other discussion on a consent agenda? Hearing none, would you call the roll, please? Sure. Doyle? Aye. Moody? Aye. Perez? Aye. Schultz? Aye. Stephan? Aye. D. Van Akron? T. Van Akron? Vanderbilt? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Bauman? Aye. D. Berg? Aye. E. Berg? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carried. 1822 to be referred. 1823 will lie over. 1824 through 30 to be referred. 1831 by Alderman T. Van Akron, authorizing a temporary extension of the Marina Management Agreement. Alderman Van Akron. Your Honor, I would ask for a suspension of the rules, please. Just a second. Move. Is there any objections? <laughs> That's my job to ask that. Who made, the second? <coughs> who made the second? I'm not sure who made the second. Okay. Alderman Schultz. Is there any objections to suspension? The reason being, we'll explain anyways, just for everybody. Um, this contract, I believe, is up at December 31st, and all the language hasn't been worked out yet between um, the lawyers and, and um current persons who are just asking for an extension of the old contract until the new one's in place. Yes. Hearing no objections, <laughs> I'll uh, ask that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Moved and second, the resolution be put upon its passage under discussion. Hearing none, would you please call the roll? Perez? Aye. Schultz? Aye. Stephan? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderwil? Aye. Longerman? Aye. Warner, Aye. Bauman, Aye. D. Berg, Aye. E. Berg, Aye. Doyle, Aye. Moody, Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carried. 1832 will go to risk management. 
1833 through 35 will lie over. 1836 through 42 to be referred. 1843, Sheboygan Transit Commission. 1844, by Alderman T. Van Akron, amending municipal code to provide for the first meeting in January 2003 to be held on Tuesday, January 7th, 2003. Alderman Van Akron. Hold on to your seats now. I'd like to suspend the rules again. It's been moved in a second for suspension. Is there objections to suspension? Hearing none, proceed. Again, the reason for suspension is we're asking for the first meeting in January. Uh, there are several of us that are not going to be here, and as you see tonight, we're already two or three short. And as we saw on Thursday, we were a few short. Um, we're afraid that if three or four of us are all out of town that night, and one or two are sick, sick we would not have a quorum. Um, that's the reason we're asking to move the and that night. So hearing that, I would move that the ordinance be put upon its passage. Move to second that the ordinance be put upon its passage again. This is to move the meeting. This is the sixth for the uh, inauguration in Madison. Hopefully other aldermen will join us down there for that that evening or department heads. Okay, if there's no other discussion, Pat, would you call the roll? Schultz? Aye. Stephan? Aye. Dee Van Akron? Aye. T. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Bauman? Aye. D. Berg? Aye. E. Berg? Aye. Doyle? Aye. Moody? Aye. Perez? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carried. 1725, resolution by Alderman Schultz, Perez, and Stefan transferring funds to establish estimated revenue and appropriation for room tax res receipts to be paid to the Chamber of Commerce. Alderman Perez or Schultz? Schultz. 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 Vice Chair? I make motion to resolution be put upon its passage. Can you take the next one too? Can you take the next one too, Val? Certainly. The next one's a resolution to authorize the transfer of funds to provide monies to establish estimated revenue and appropriation for capital outlay items in the 2003 budget. Make a motion that resolution be put upon its passage also. Second. Moved and second that both resolutions be put upon their passage under discussion. Mm -hmm. Hearing none, would you call the roll? Stephan? Aye. D. Van Akron? Aye. T. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Steve Berg, Aye. Eber, Aye. Doyle, Aye. Moody, Aye. Perez, Aye. excuse me, Port said this. <laughs> I got the wrong name. Perez is right. Schultz. <laughs> Aye. <laughs> 13 eyes. Aye. Motion carried. <laughs> okay. I'm caught up. 1724 by Alderman D. Van Akron, Wangaman, Warner, Winninger, and Perez, authorizing authorizing across the board increases for eligible non-representative employees. Alderman Van Akron. Your Honor, I move that the uh, committee report be accepted and adopted. Moved and second that the resolution be put upon its passage under discussion. Alderman Bauman. Thank you, Your Honor. The question I've got on this is, is this only for one year this year, or is this uh, going to be a, a permanent ongoing thing? Ed, or Mike, whoever. One year? One year. It's only talking about 2003. Only 2003. One year. Alderman Schultz. Thank you, Your Honor. I kind of painted myself in a corner, I guess, with my comments earlier this evening about a uh, possible wage freeze. Uh, and here is a proposal to increase the non reps pay, uh, which I sort of agree with, but after making my comments, if I'm not going to be talking out of both sides of my mouth, I guess I have to uh, kind of back up my uh, comments that I made earlier with a proposed wage freeze, and I will vote against this uh, somewhat reluctantly, but I, I think I have to in order to, to substantiate my comments, uh, previous comments. Okay. Thank you. If there's no other discussion, Pat, would you call the roll, please? Dean Akron? Aye. T. Van Akron, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Wangaman, Aye. Warner, Aye. Bauman, Aye. D. Berg, Aye. E. Berg, Aye. Doyle, Aye. Moody, Aye. Perez, Aye. Schultz, no. Stefan. Aye. 12 ayes, 1 no. Motion carried. 
1745 RC by Public Protection and Safety recommending filing documents submitted submitting a communication from Mary Zarfanitis relative to an accident at North 10th Street and Wisconsin Avenue and passing the attached ordinance. Alderman Warner. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I make a motion we accept and file the report of committee and, and pass the attached ordinance. Second. Moved and second, accept and adopt the RSC and pass the general ordinance under discussion. Under discussion, Your Honor, this ordinance will help alleviate a vision problem at the intersection of North 10th Street and Wisconsin Avenue. Because of the lay of the land in this area, when vehicles are parked within the legal limits, limits applied to all intersections, it is often difficult for motorists to see oncoming traffic without pulling partway out into the intersection. It is impractical to install stop signs on what has become a major travel route since the opening of North 10th Street to two-way traffic. We hope and expect that this will help solve the vision problem and not delay the safe flow of traffic. Your Public Protection Safety Committee recommends passage. Thank you. Alderman Schultz, under discussion. Thank you, Your Honor. Parking is kind of a, at a premium in this whole downtown area, which includes Stanton, Wisconsin, down there. I drove through there twice and I even stopped this afternoon and looked at it and, and traffic and uh, I don't see a problem there. Uh, I, th I think we should be uh, encouraging movement of traffic, I've stated that before in the past when uh, stop signs have been proposed and parking restricted. Uh, we need to encourage traffic and traffic brings customers. Uh, I, I just don't see a problem with parking down there and to limit parking by, uh, this has got to be four to six parking spaces that are going to be eliminated, 60 feet on either side. Uh, I, I just don't see the hazard there that we're going to gain that much or gain anything from uh, restricting parking there. So I'm going to vote against this also. Alderman Burke. Thank you, Your Honor. I manage this apartment building right on Kenton, Wisconsin, and most of my residents there are all senior citizens. Most of them walk, and I drive in and out of that alley every day, three, four times, and when the traffic is coming from the south past the back of the post office, by the time they hit that alley down there, they're going 35, 40, 45 miles an hour. I think what the, they should do is get an officer down there with, with a radar or something and check that speed down there for one thing. But the, the eliminating the parking on those uh, two corners, I think, is going to help the matter here. Thank you. Thank you. The other Alderman Bird. Thank you. Uh, I think as a, a point of further uh, comment, the area is also up for redevelopment. And I think we will be looking at uh, that uh, increasing the residential density in that area. I think there will be a lot more traffic on that, uh, on that uh, particular street, so I think when I uh, went to the committee meeting, I, I had the same concerns, but I think in looking at the development potential for that area, I think that we'll likely end up doing this in the future anyway as we increase the housing density in that area. Okay, thank you. Alderman Warner. I thank Your Honor. This actually removes, I believe it's at the most, two parking spaces on each side of the street going to the south or to the north on each side of Wisconsin Avenue. And you already have for 15 feet from the intersection that you have to be back. That's what I meant by the standard intersection uh, parking setbacks. We, we opened up parking on 7th Street and on 9th Street, and there's a lot of open stalls there. A lot of them aren't being used because obviously you can park down here and not pay right now. And that's okay, except for the fact that we had two accidents there in the last, uh, I want to say six months. I could be off a month or two in each direction. Uh, and it's a real concern for the people that live in that neighborhood. There's a lot of uh, older drivers that use this intersection to go up Wisconsin Avenue and because of the way Wisconsin Avenue comes down to a stop and I used to live on Wisconsin Avenue so I know it very well although there were none of these buildings there when I lived there and the way the hill comes down from behind a post office on 10th Street you're just coming into a kettle there and it does create a vision problem and if you're there when those cars are parked up to the corner you can see it as evident as as can be and, and we don't want to stop cars by putting a stop sign in and we want to let traffic flow but this is something that hopefully will work so Thank I ask for your support if there's no other discussion would you call the roll please T Van Akron Vanderweel Longaman Warner Bauman Deberg 
Eberg, Aye. Doyle, Aye. Moody, Aye. Perez, Aye. Schultz, no. Stephan, no. D. Van Akron. Aye. 11 ayes, 2 noes. Motion carried. 1736 RC by Public Works recommending amending the municipal code relating to sewer, sewers and sewage disposal. Alderman Berg. Uh, thank you, and I'd uh, move to file a report of committee and pass a general ordinance. You want to take the next one, too? Uh, and also, then, uh, uh, general ordinance uh, 640203. Uh, I move to pass that general ordinance. Moved and seconded to pass, to accept and ad adopt the RC and pass both general ordinances under discussion. Hearing none, would you call the roll, please? Vanderwill? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warner? Bauman, D. Berg, E. Berg, Doyle, Aye. Moody, Aye. Perez, Aye. Schultz, Aye. Stephan, D. Van Akron, T. Van Akron, 13 ayes. Motion carried. Steve, other matters? 1846 is a communication being 45. a petition. Oh. Excuse yeah, me, 1845. Okay. The communication being a petition from Richard Manny et al. requesting the city add signage to the intersection of Park Avenue, North Point Drive, Barrett Street, and Lincoln Avenue as the intersection is unsafe. Public protection and safety. 1846 is a communication from James and Pat Aleph requesting a three year extension on connecting to the mini sewer being planned and installed between Geely Avenue and East Mark Drive. Public Works. 1847 is a communication from Terry Verstrati of Wigwam Mills relating to dedicating 0.65 acres of the northeast corner of their land to the city for a detention pond and their intention to sell the city the land for the price of a dollar. Public Works. Uh, Planning Commission and Public Works. Excuse me. Dual referral, you're right. Planning Commission mm -hmm. also. Mm -hmm. 1848 is an RO submitting an application from Mark Hassler for a change in zoning classification of property located at 1212 Pennsylvania Avenue from Class UI Urban Industrial to UC Urban Commercial Classification. Plan Commission. 1849 is a resolution directing a public hearing to be held in connection with change of the city's official zoning map for property located at 1212 Pennsylvania Avenue. Alderman. Would the resolution be put upon its passage? Moved and seconded resolution be put upon this passage under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. 1850 is an ordinance amending the official zoning map of the, of the uh, zoning ordinance to change the use district classification of property located at 1212 Pennsylvania Avenue from UI to UC Urban Commercial. Plan Commission. 1851 is a resolution authorizing entering into a revised state municipal agreement for engineering design services and construction for State Highway 28, South 16th Street to Georgia Avenue. That will go to Public Works. Alderman Van Akron. Your Honor, I would move to convene in closed session under the provisions of Section 19.851E of the Wisconsin Statutes for the purpose of deliberating the sale of public properties and investing of public funds for the possible hotel water park conference center project and a possible distribution center project where competitive bids and bargaining reasons require a closed session. Move to second to go into closed session. Is there any, object is there any objections? Hearing none, would you call the roll? Longerman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Bauman? Aye. D. Berg? Aye. E. Berg? Aye. Doyle? Aye. Moody? Aye. Perez? Aye. Schultz? Aye. Stephan? Aye. D. Van Akron? Aye. T. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderbilt? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carried. We'll take five minutes. Be back in here in five minutes. We'll let the press clear out and then we'll start a full session.